Hey there, APTV. This pro tip is going to be about a subject that I think is really hot nowadays. If you've played tournaments lately, you've noticed that players are opening pots for less than three times the big blind. For a long time, the standard was about three times the big blind, sometimes even four. But nowadays, you see a lot of players opening pots for two and a half times the small blind, sometimes even just the minimum rates. This is a popular subject called small ball. A lot of players are trying to play small ball now. So what I want to talk to you about is exploiting small ball. That's right, how to deal with players that want to play really small pots and have small raises and small um, bets in order to sort of chip up without risking their chips. That's a good strategy for them. It's a good strategy for you, but it can be exploited. So here's what we're going to do. When a player is playing small ball, you notice that they're opening pots for two or two and a half times the big blind. Your best bet is to actually see more flops with them as long as you're in position. The reason for that is quite simple. They're making it cheaper for you to play, so you should play more. Now here's what you can do. When a player opens a pot for two, two and a half times the small blind and you call in position, I highly recommend that you pay very close attention to their tendency, meaning how much do they bet in proportion to the pot size. So let's say a player opens the pot for two and a half times the big blind and now the pot has a hundred dollars in it and they come out and they bet forty dollars on the flop. Their continuation bet is for forty dollars. Well, they're telling you that their small ball technique is about 40%, betting about 40% of the pot. That's not unusual nowadays. We even see some bets that are in the 25 to 33% range. So, how do you exploit that? Well, it's very simple. You see more flops and you continue in the hand longer than you otherwise would. What do I mean by that? Let's say I have an 8-9 suited and there's a raise in front of me for two times the big blind. I'm going to call in position as long as I'm not at a table where there's a lot of pre-flop raising. Let's say the flop comes down king 8-4 with one of my suit. That's not a great flop. I flop medium second pair with a sort of small kicker and generally speaking that's going to be a hand that a lot of players would fold if we were playing normal sort of poker from a couple years ago. But nowadays, because the, the raise is small, the preflop raise is small, and because the flop bet is often small to go with it, they're basically saying to you, it's not very expensive to continue in the hand. So what you should do is see the next card. You should make that call even though you don't have a very big hand. And the reason for that is simple. Because they've made it cheap, it now behooves you to go ahead and call that small bet and see if you can improve your hand. Often, a hand like two pair will be big enough to take down the pot. So, how do you figure out if a player is playing small ball or if they are the traditional type of player? Let's call those guys home run hitters. In the older days, <laughs> older days meaning three or four years ago, players would often make big preflop bet raises and big bets on the flop, almost pot size a lot of times. So nowadays, we have to distinguish between those that are playing small ball and those that want to play home run ball. Again, the ones that play small ball, you have to see more flops along with them and you have to continue in the hand with them a little bit longer because they're laying you a pretty good price. Remember, you're only paying a small price to potentially win a big amount. But how do you deal with home run hitters? Well, home run hitters, they want to play that big pot. They want to hit that flop and bet a big amount, and they want to try to either double up or do something big. Well, first of all, like I said, we want to distinguish between the small ball and the, and the home run hitters. It's pretty easy. We're just looking at bet size relation to the pot, and obviously pre-flop, we're looking at how much they raise for. Home run hitters, you trap them. What do I mean by that? You play hands like small pairs, uh, you play suited connectors, and you play ace x suited. And if you can flop really big, then you trap them, you make the nuts, and you bust them. The small ball players, we're going to figure out their pressure points. 
What is a pressure point? A pressure point is a fraction of the pot which they are comfortable calling or betting, above which they are not comfortable calling or betting. So, let's say I, I find out this player's pressure point is about two-thirds the size of the pot. They won't make a bet or call a bet that's more than two-thirds the size of the pot. So, what do I do when I want to bluff a player that plays small ball and has a pressure point of about two-thirds the pot? Well, if I'm bluffing him, I bet just above that pressure point. Obviously, if I want to get called, I bet just below that pressure point. So pressure points are very important. You have to figure out each individual player's pressure points. So how do you do that? You pay ultra close attention at the tables. We've said that over and over again, and that's going to be the theme throughout. You have to be really attentive at the tables. And with small ball players today, you want to exploit them by calling more and continuing the hand more. Home run hitters, you want to play pretty tight. You want to play a hand that makes the nuts. And once you make the nuts, they're often the ones that are going to push the action and you'll play a big pop. That's your tip for this week. Take care, APTV.